Hi there, this is Unmesh from Pixim Perfect, and today we're gonna learn how to get rid of hair fringe after selecting hair or masking hair in Photoshop. Oftentimes, what happens is after we select the hair, there's a little bit of fringing around the edge or the background color just comes in. It's sometimes not visible, but when we put the subject on a new background, it becomes so much more visible and annoying. So, we'll get rid of that today. So, without any further ado, let's get started. So here we are in Photoshop and if you want to go ahead and download this photo and follow along, check the links in the description. Now you might be thinking the background is pretty flat, right? So it must be easier for us to select the subject. However, we will still see the fringe. This tutorial is about removing the fringes. So let's do it. First of all, let's select the background and then remove it. How can we do that? Simple. The background is of one distinct color. So we will go to select and then color range. Now inside of color range, we can choose first of all the selection preview to none and then with the help of the eyedropper tool, click once over here. I had already done it so it looks perfect but let me do that for you again. So click once on the background and decrease the fuzziness. All right. With the help of the plus eyedropper tool, just start adding areas around the subject. Now. At this point, you can change the selection preview to grayscale, black other areas which are not selected, white other areas which are selected. Zoom in. We need to work on the edges. So let's increase the fuzziness. Looks fine. Let's zoom in right here. The edges look fried up. So keep on increasing it. Don't increase too much. Inside of her hair will also be selected. We don't want that. So we need to find that balance. This seems to be soft and nice. Make sure it's not frying up. Make sure it's soft and nice. There's a couple areas that we need to work on, but basically this is okay. Okay, all right, hit okay. Now, the background is selected, not the subject. So we need to invert the selection. Press Control or Command, Shift and I. Click on the mask button. Okay, now we have the subject. Let's put a background. Let's put a white background. Click on the adjustment layer icon and choose solid color. And we're going to choose white. Hit OK. Put it in the background. Put it under it. You see the blue fringe? That's totally disturbing. However, we need to work on the mask first. So hold the Alt or Option. Click on the mask. There are a couple areas which needs to be painted in. Take the brush, foreground color white. Press X to toggle between the foreground and the background and just paint in some areas. But it's not painting, why? Because the flow is low. Increase the flow to 100, opacity to 100, and just fill in those areas. There are a couple areas inside that we need to fill in. No problem there. Easy. Make the brush a little harder. You can choose the blend mode overlay for critical areas. So you can change that to overlay. And now if you paint, it just won't paint on the outside. See? Awesome, isn't it? Zoom out. There are a couple areas here. So overlay works really well. If you have white selected, it won't paint on the black areas when you have overlay selected as a blend mode for the brush. Okay, great. Couple areas here as well. Overlay selected. Great. Covered. All right, the mask is perfect. Hold the Alt or Option. Click on the mask back again. And there we have a very good mask. There's a little bit uh, around the corner which is left out. Hold the Alt or Option, click on it again. And just paint it with black, not white this time. Take the brush, foreground color black, and just paint it. Now once you have done working with all this, do not forget to change the blend mode back to normal. Because next time it can create problems. Okay, so hold the Alt or Option, click on the mask back again. How do we get rid of these blue things? Now it's time for us to remove the fringes. No matter what we do, if the background is very colorful, the hair will always take the color of the background. Here's why, because the hair is very thin. And we know by the law of physics that light bends around the corner. That's why when you have sun at the back or any light source at the back of the subject, and you have the subject and you captured the subject, even though the subject is black, there is a rim light around the edge. That is because the light is bending. If the light never bended, 
we will never see the rim light effect. So the color light also bends and just the hair takes in the color of the background. It's very difficult to avoid. So the only way around is this. Create a new layer. Okay. Take the brush. Now zoom in. Select the eyedropper tool. Make sure the sample size is 3x3. Three three. Make sure it's not point sample. 3x3 three three is good. What 3x3 three three does is that it creates a box of 3 pixels by 3 pixels and takes average color of that. And you can choose sample, current and below. Take the brush. Now, sample from these areas and just paint. You can choose the color black to see better. Hit OK. Get back to layer 1. Hold the Alt or Option. Take a sample from here and paint. But it's painting everywhere. So we need to create a clipping mask. Hold the Alt or Option. Click on the line between these two. Now this is limited to just the hair. Whatever you do here will be limited to this. Isn't that awesome? Let's go back. So take the brush. Let's make it a little softer. Okay. And just sample and paint on the outside. Not on the inside. But on the outside flyaway hairs. Okay. There are a couple hairs that look very bad. We better remove them. They're like white elephants. So it's expensive to maintain and time consuming. So don't worry about those. Don't worry about this. We'll remove them. Let's let's remove them. Select the mask. Take the brush foreground color black. And we can just simply remove them. For extra security, you can choose the blend mode overlay. Overlay just won't let you paint on the white areas. So if the blend mode is overlay and try to paint inside, it just won't paint. So this is also something we don't need. Looks great. Everything else looks great. Okay. Got that right. Here, let's remove this fly away. We don't need that. Let's remove that. Yes, this area is pretty much good. Okay. All right. These areas are fine. Okay. Now we are done removing the hairs that we don't want. We can get back to the layer, take the brush, and start painting on the outside flyaway hairs. Okay, so let's just zoom in, take the brush, hold the Alt or Option, click on it, and just start painting on these. Just on the outside. For the inside, we have another technique. Leave it at that. Let's move to this part of the image. Let's zoom out just a little bit for the outside. Take a sample and just paint here. These will be done later. These are on the inside for the outside. Here, there, where there's a lot of hair. Take a sample and paint. The reason why we are not painting inside because it actually makes things flat when we just flatly paint. So this is just for the outside. Uh, there's just one or two hairs and stuff, right? Now the hairs might look a little pixelated. Don't worry about it. We'll take care of that as well. Okay, now once we have done that, let's create one more layer and hold the Alt or Option. Click on the line between these two again to create a clipping mask of this. Then we'll choose the Clone Stem tool. Now let's zoom in and take a sample. Hold the Alt or Option, take a sample from here. Make sure the sample is current and below, blend mode normal. Take a sample and just paint. Since this is a clipping mask, it just won't go out. See, this is for the inside because we didn't want it to be flat. So much more better. Take a sample and paint. Take a sample, paint. Hold the Alter option, click to take a sample, paint. Sometimes directly doing this and skipping the step of painting on the outside also works. But you know what, when you have a lot of hairs and when you sample from inside and paint outside on the hairs, the texture also comes on single hair, which can really make it look very strange. And that's why for the inside, we use the clone stem tool and for the outside, we just paint. Just one or two hairs, we paint. And for the inside bunch, clone stem tool. This area can be easy. Okay, so that's the problem there. If we take a sample from here and paint, see, it just doesn't fit, right? So now we need to be careful with sampling. And for the outside, we have to paint. We have to get back to this layer, take the brush, and just make the brush a little smaller and paint for some areas. 
Let's get back to the clone stem tool and this layer. Let's see what we can do here. Okay, that looks perfect. Let's have a look at this side on the inside. This can be a little tricky. Also, you might want to take a brush, get back to this layer, and then just simply paint. Get back to the clone stamp tool. That's not helping. Okay. We might have painted a little extra, so simply take the eraser and then just erase these areas. You can increase the flow of the eraser. Erase the extras and we are good. Okay. Zoom out. Now, some of these edges look very pixely or fried out. For that, simple. Select the mask. All right. Select the blur tool right here and simply you can choose the strength, whatever you like, and just blur it out a little bit, just a little bit to get off the fryness away. Here we forgot to do it. Let's get back to it and choose the clone stamp tool and just paint. There we go. We got rid of the fringe. Easy, easy peasy. Okay, here as well. Great. Now let's get back to the mask with the blur tool and we are just blurring the mask, not the subject, but the mask. It was pixely here, it was pixely there. Just blur it out. Or there are some hairs which we do not need, which are just not required like that. So we can simply take the brush, foreground color black and just remove them. It's better not to have them again. White elephants. We don't want to have white elephants. Okay. Let's get back to the blur tool. Let's see if we can blur it out. Okay. Now we have gotten rid of a lot of the fringe. Zoom out and have a look at it. Now if you change the background back to white, see there's no fringe. Isn't that so awesome? There's a little bit of fringe there. You can get back to it and get back to the layer, the first one. Select the clone stamp tool and then just take a sample from here and paint on in here. Paint from the nearby areas. And if painting doesn't help with the clone stamp tool, you can just simply paint with the brush. Okay, so that's not helping. The clone stamp tool isn't help helping. So I'll take the brush, sample from here and just paint on the outside. Okay. And then paint a little bit here and then take the clone stamp tool and zoom in and try to work it out a little by taking a clone from here, taking the brush back again, painting a little bit there, here and there, and we are good to go. Have a look. There's no fringe now. Before, full of blue fringe, right? This looks totally sad. We cannot use it. But when you add these, no fringe at all, totally gone. So that's how to remove fringe. Now you can choose whatever background you want and this will look great. You can choose black, you can choose gray, you can choose a little reddish, whatever you want. And it will work because there's no fringe. It's very difficult to get the perfect selection without the fringes. Even if you do have the very perfect selection, there will be color around the corner because the hair is so thin that it takes up color of the background. The only way to get rid of it is just painting it on top of it or using the clone stamp tool, sampling from other parts of the hair and just covering that up. And that's how we did it, by creating a clipping mask, as simple as that. So that's pretty much it for this video. Hope this video helped you. And if it did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not to subscribe. Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss any other future tip, trick or tutorial. I would like to take this moment to thank all these nice and amazing people for supporting this channel on Patreon and helping keep Pix Imperfect free for everybody forever. Thank you so very much for your support. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.